Maybe the thing you're most scared of is exactly what you should I do. I love what I do still. I have passion for it. Whatever it was, I, I just tried to dominate it. In a place I've always been trying to get to. I got my first restaurant job when I was 15 years old. I was a busboy and a room service waiter. Now I'm a restaurateur. I'm a blue collar guy, and I'm a president of a company. I was a bad kid. I was always in trouble. Like, basically did everything that you're not supposed to do as a child, like I did it. Scout 35. For somebody like me, like I didn't go to culinary school, so I don't have a college degree. I think if you can get into an apprenticeship program, that's the best way. I did one at a resort called the Greenbrier Hotel. I was this young punk kid that thought I knew something, and what I realized when I got there was that I didn't know shit. Is that your mom? That's my mom. That's the day of my graduation from my apprenticeship. That's my display that's in the background. We were supposed to have a theme, and my theme was that there was no theme. My theme was whatever I wanted it to be. Is this Brian over here? Yeah. Brian worked in restaurants first, and then he got me in my first job, so I went to work with him. I never wanted to be a doctor or a lawyer. I wanted to do something creative. I was doing my apprenticeship and had a child at 21, then I had a second child by the age of 23, 24. I think that forces you to definitely push yourself a little harder. I had responsibility, I have a family, I had, I had to take care of my children. The kitchens got bigger, the jobs got bigger, the teams got bigger, but the job was always the same. What are fire scouts? What are fire hot go? I knew that in order to make the next decision in my career, I needed to figure out how to get my own restaurant. My reason for doing Top Chef was because I thought it would be an easy way to win $100,000. You know the story, I win, come back, I started building a restaurant. Ink was like short for incorporated, so we're like, well, let's put a K on it because ink is permanent and we want to build a company that's going to be here forever. I'm running the day-to-day -day operations of the restaurant, um, collaborating with Chef Michael on the food, just running the day-to-day -day here. I'm proud to come here and serve this food. When I tell people that I'm the chef of the ink, they're like, oh, wow, because I just think I'm some punk. We worked in Northern California and behind the restaurant there, wild fennel branches grew like all along the creek. Found that actually the wild branches that we work with uh, have more flavor than the fennel that we buy at the store. This hike was much more dramatic in your story the other day. This is LA foraging. I thought you were like cliff jumping. You know, in nature, it's just there. It's not growing because it wants to get picked, it's growing because that's the only thing it knows to do. There's no way that helicopter is here for me. Put the fennel down! Cole, this is the part where you go over the fence and get the flowers. You know, anyone can call a vegetable purveyor and have them send you some fresh fennel that you slice and put on a plate. And This just kind of connects the diner with where the ingredients are coming from. Plus, this is much more fun. Get out of here before we get arrested. You know, people can come in and say, like, why did you guys make a dish like that? Or why do you have to freeze everything? Or why do you have to put things in nitrogen? Or why do you have to, like, why do you have to do that? And the answer is, like, why not? In the earlier part of my career, I was in an environment that was very structured and very corporate and very, like, this is the right thing. I'd worked in places that I didn't belong. I think once I got through all of that and realized that I wasn't going to go on another job interview, I wasn't going to send my resume to anyone else. Not everybody gets the opportunity to do that. I get to express myself the way I want to now.